Welcome to another episode of Australian Birds in the Wild by Plumes of Oz. And today we're going to look at a shy retiring parrot found in the East Australian drylands. This is the blue bonnet, often referred to as the Eastern blue bonnet, separating it from the Western or the Naretha blue bonnet of Western Australia that has a yellow belly. The binomial name is Northiella hamatogaster meaning firstly the Northiella from Alfred North, a museum curator at Sydney Museum, and then the Hematogaster, meaning blood-stained belly. These birds are very cautious. Just watch as this dotterel walks by. Watch the blue bonnet. It just takes off, frightened by this smaller bird. Blue is the prominent colour of a blue bonnet, predominantly on the wing, but as its name suggests, there is blue on the face. Blue bonnets, being cetaceiforms, move in flocks. Remember that cockatoos, also cetaceiforms, have huge flocks. The blue bonnet, being a parrot, goes in a smaller flock. I previously, in another video, said that the flocks that I had seen were the maximum of 12. I am now pleased to report that I have seen flocks of up to 30 birds. This happened in 2023, and this eruption was the result of good rain and grass, so that the seed was readily available. The preceding spring rains were a deluge, resulting in flooding of many of the nests of open nesting birds. But as a parrot nesting in hollows, they were protected from the deluge with a subsequent eruption in numbers whereas in the same area, the numbers of open nesting birds has deteriorated. They are found in the dry interior of the southeast corner of Australia. Often they are referred to as the blood-bellied parrot because of the red belly. But in Western Australia, the blue bonnets are a little different, for they have a yellow belly. And so there are two species. Most of the back is this grey olive green colour. And here with the crested pigeons, you get a relative idea of size. They are similar in size to the Platycercus or the Rosellas. Note here that the crested pigeons don't disturb these birds, for they tolerate one another sharing the same habitat, both looking for dry seed. And of course, dry seed eaters need water, so they are often found together. Early morning, after a cold night, and this flock of blue bonnets are out on the sticks of a tree, trying to warm up. They're not in the leaves, for the arid zone areas have cool nights. So the birds sit in the sun in the morning, here, there are 25 birds in the tree, and there are another five in the adjacent trees that I couldn't fit in the frame. This gave me the biggest flock of blue bonnets that I have ever seen, a total of 30 birds. Blue bonnets in a smaller flock. Look at the hematogaster or the red belly. In some birds, it is wide, in other birds, it's just more central. This may help to give an indication of sexual identity. The wider band is a typical mature male. The more narrow central banding of the red is indicative of a female or an immature bird. Blue bonnets are mostly terrestrial feeders, coming down onto the ground to forage for seeds and herbaceous material. Blue bonnets feeding as a typical flock. There is a combination of dried grass seed, herbaceous material and some green grass. Cetaceiforms on the ground tend to hop a lot, particularly the lighter birds like the parrots. This is because their femur and tibia is short and their tarsus is relatively long. So on the ground they walk with a waddle, so it's easier for them to hop. And the cockatoos, being heavier than the parrots, trend to more walking than hopping. On a dirt road, it's common in the arid areas to see the blue bonnets feeding with other seed eaters, like the crested pigeons as shown here. Then they will move off from the road, not content to eat only dry seed, but they look for herbaceous plants. And here in the dry lands, there are many seeds, particularly from prickly pants. And it's amazing 
how the parrots and cockatoos thrive on eating this type of seed. Not only do they eat seed, but they also eat the greenery of the herbaceous plants and also to a degree the grass. But the dominant food for these birds seems to be the herbaceous seed and plant leaf, more so than the grass seed. Here, the blue bonnets are eating seed caught in the depressions of the ground. As they lift their head out of the hollows, notice that there is green in the bill. This is foliar material. So from these herbaceous plants, they eat not only the seed, but also the greenery. Now there are several subspecies of the eastern blue bonnet or hematogaster and just look at this bird wandering down. He's got the classical bird on the ground, wobbly sort of a walk, but he doesn't have a great deal of bright red on the side of the wing. The red colour is very flat and this is the typical subspecies found in western New South Wales. But now look, look at these ones. The red on the wing is now accentuated. Are they a different subspecies? Now, as it's all in the same area, I'm reticent to label these as being a different subspecies. So let's look at this with a little bit more detail. Here, the intense red on the wing signifies a subspecies, Amato rus. And this bird also has a red vent, in contrast to the nominate eastern bird with the yellow vent. And going back to this dam in New South Wales, we see the nominate bird. The other blue bonnet has a little bit of hint of red on the vent. So here out in the floodplain west of Burke, we have two subspecies present in the same geographic area. So with these two subspecies at this site, we have red vent and the yellow vented birds. There is a third subspecies called the palisons, which is just a more pale version of what we see here with the nominate species. And looking at a group, you may even say that looks very much like a palisons. And with some subspecies like this, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So the blue bonnet in WA is a little bit different, for it has a yellow vent and lacks the red belly. So it's hard to call it hematogaster. So it's now its own species, and this is called Naretha. What I was really pleased to see with these birds is the effect of direct sunlight. This bird, normally a drab grey fawn colour with a little bit of olive green, suddenly lights up the reds and the blues just glowing in the direct light. The blues on the wing are stunning with a proximal shoulder cerulean blue, then a warm blue laterally going to indigo at the end of the wing. This blue bonnet in this tree is going to show us his vent and you can see here that it's yellow and the belly is red and this is the typical New South Wales nominate race. You can see the cerulean edge to the wing. When first described, the blue bonnets were thought to be neophema, a grass parrot, and often the neophema have got a blue head, like this beautiful scarlet chested parrot. So a blue around the face is not unique to the blue bonnet. Here in the dawn light is a small group of blue bonnets, four birds. Smaller groups like this are far more common than the large groups. The most common size of the groups is between four and ten birds. The tail of a blue bonnet is fairly long, very similar to a rosella, and I don't know if you noticed that as it's stretched, the tail does have a flat appearance. A pair of blue bonnets, the male on the left with the wide, broad red belly marking, and the female with the more soft, narrow central marking. Blue bonnets, like all parrots, are lovebirds in a way, and they do alloprening.
Within avian flocks, there is always a component of dominance of one bird, and you can see it here. Also, notice that on the head, some of the feathers do raise up in a mini crest. It is often thought that this is a younger bird, but I'm uncertain about this. Yellow-throated miners are very defensive of their resources, in particular a water and a flowering blossom. And here you can see them at the waterhole, trying to chase off the blue bonnets. Sexual identity markers in blue bonnets to look for are firstly the wide red marking on the belly, secondly the blue on the face, it is deeper in the male, the female is a little bit more grey. As to the cerulean shoulder, it is often covered by body feathers and I think has very little to do with any sexual identity. Some pair examples, but don't be discouraged, it is hard to tell a male from a female blue bonnet in the field. Blue bonnets are mostly terrestrial feeders, but here you can see them up in a wilga tree, or the Australian willow. This is a tree that has flowers and then fruit. Here it is in flower, and the blue bonnets are in, eating the flowers and the nectar. With this pair eating the wilga flower, you can see the male is on the right. While the blue bonnets are feeding, you can hear the yellow-throated miners in the background calling, trying to get a flock together to chase the blue bonnets out of the wilga tree, for the miners believe that this is their feeding territory. The bonnet has his mouth full of grass seed, and seed is the mainstay of the diet of these birds, like any other parrot. But there is one variation. Instead of grass seed, they are more into seeds from herbaceous plants. And out on the central plains where the blue bonnets are found, there is an abundance of salt bush and prickly pants that these birds feed on. In Australia, we have many different Chenopodia, and this is what this blue bonnet is feeding on Chenopodia. In Australia, we commonly call them the salt bush plants. During drought, Many of the Chenopodia will dry out. As they are around bushes, they will become a little bit like a tumbleweed. And the one that's famous for this is the roly-poly bush. And many Chenopodia have spines and burrs, so they are not really of great value to stock. But here you can see, for the blue bonnets, the fruit after the flower is one of the things that they crave. So the blue bonnet can be regarded as the bird of the arid plains where the salt bush grow. In the spring and summer months when these birds breed, they are often more found in pairs than small family groups. A small flock of 10 birds. When flying about and not going to ground, the blue bonnets will often be a bit like cockatiels. They will land on dead sticks out in the open, away from the tree canopy. But this is more likely to happen in the cool of a morning. Towards midday, in the heat of the dry zone areas where these birds live, they are more likely then to fly into the shade of the canopy. Another view of pairs as they are out in the open on the sticks so you can get an idea of sexual identity. When fledged, the young birds generally have the same colour as an adult, but the crown of the head is more ruffled, making it look as though they have a small crest. One of the features of the young birds is head bobbing, as though they are still begging for food. Another group, this time there are five birds. Another size comparison. On the right are the two blue bonnets, on the left are the ringneck parrots or the bernardies, and you can see they are slightly smaller than the ringnecks. Listen to the calls in flight.
On takeoff in the early part of the flight, they are quite vigorous with their calls. And like many of the parrots, they also have a whistle. And also chatter in the trees amongst themselves. Two young birds with this pseudo crest. These are the nominate race birds again. The red on the wing is minimal, more just a little hint of orange than red itself. But notice the hairdo. There is a semi erectile mini crest or pseudo crest, and this is typical of a young, immature bird. Head bobbing and a little bit of a crest again, a younger bird. It's evening, the light has nearly gone, and here a typical flock behaviour of the blue bonnets. They will often come as a flock of an evening to drink. This concludes our video on the blue bonnets. If you'd like to hit the bell and subscribe, you'll get notification of our next release which will involve a little bit more than getting out in the field and doing video of birds, we are going to present a series on how to paint birds. And here is a short appetizer of what we will present. The painting of the Major Mitchell, or now called the Pink Cockatoo, was an award-winning painting, judged by the Society of Artists. So please tell your art friends, particularly those who are interested in wildlife, to check out our channel.